actually, well, I've just talked for five minutes to nobody because I pressed the photograph button. So it shows you how used as I am at this thing. I thought I have to do a few videos where it really is just you sort of observing me quickly in the studio. Um, what I've been doing is I've been making uh, lots of little bits out of Edro clay for uh, making... Um, I just have to find out where to get that. These are lots of little impressions that I've made out of silicone moulds. Maybe you should just take my word for that. And these are tiny little um, pieces of conical shaped air dried clay, which I've made by a piece of tissue paper, some air dried clay. You can make it, there's brilliant, absolutely brilliant recipe on YouTube. And so this is stuff I'd buy, but you can make it too. Roll it into a little ball, like so. Squidge it out flat-ish with your fingers. I find it best just to dip the tip of my fingers in water here, like that. Just helps somehow. Stick it on top of the tissue paper and start to... Oops, maybe that's too much water. And pull it and squeeze it out. So it starts to go like that, maybe, yes, like that, you can see. Then what I'm going to do is I'm going to tear the paper and tear into the centre of the disc and then bring one over the other so that we create a little cone like that and leave it to dry. I've done a lot already, um, cone shapes and also um, impressions. I have loads and loads of um, blue silicone moulds that I made uh, last year from tiny bits of ends of fur cones and flowers and shells and shapes and these things which I was waving about before are off plane trees. They're the seed heads that fall in the autumn and they have long sort of sinewy um, stems and people walk on them and they start to splay out so they're very fibrous -y. and they're lovely and they just sort of have this kind of aerial quality about them and I was in London I picked up a lot in Berkeley Square you know that lovely song the nightingale sang in Berkeley Square well um, I have made a big bowl a big white bowl and I'm going to stick them all around the edge sort of or maybe on the inside um, and again they'll be white and gild say if I stick them on the outside I'll gild the inside that's what I'll do and um, and th then write out the lyrics to a nightingale sang in Berkeley Square and sell it with the lyrics I think maybe the music maybe maybe even write them on the bass who knows yeah good write them on the bass so I've been working away I've got lots and lots of things made I've also got a lot of little rings. I have, they're really strong, let me tap. I have soaked them in uh, resin, but it's ever such a fiddly, fiddly process. And I wanted to find something that was easier to do. Um, and I, I was in the um, DIY shop the other day and I found something called cascamite. It's a white powder. And it is a wood glue and it's weatherproof and it says bond stronger than wood itself so got to have a go at that so what I've done is I have mixed it up here um, it's a uh, sort of three and a half times cascamite to one part water um, I haven't been very accurate because I don't want it thick I don't want it like glue I just want it something that I can soak these things in. Now the ones that I dried off yesterday what I'm going to do is I'm going to drop it into there and mix it about. Take that off there for now and then wake it out with a pair of pliers. Tap it a few times to get most of the glue off. And then 
just brush off any excess. Now the reason I've done it that way, just dunked it in wholeheartedly, rather than painting it on, is A because it's quicker and B because it's just more thorough. So it has more opportunity to soak up the liquid. And then I have got here, shift a few things, show you. I have got um, just a piece of card with a, um, it's a kind of silicon baking mat, I think. I haven't quite worked out what it's meant to be for, but I bought it in the aisle that sells baking materials, so presumably that's what it's for. So just literally, see, put those down on there and let them dry out. And I should, I've started off making more bangles and what have you. Um, I've got a bangle here to show you, because I did make, um, make cloth. Let me show you. Um, this is made by getting a, a yoghurt pot and getting some um, mod rock and wrapping it round, wetting it and squidging it into shape. And when it's dry, I then put an epoxy moulding paste, which is stronger than air dry clay, but is much, much heavier. I've been using Milliput and um, then it makes a rather gothic looking chunky bracelet, but I think it's beautiful. Um, these are bits of Mother of Pearl as I glean from the foreshore of the Thames and I have just sort of stuck them on. It looks like rivets. In fact, I wish it was not so bright. If I can just find the right place to show you. you I will put photographs up. And I've just rolled the um, milliput into kind of little snakes and stuck it on. And then when it's dried, I've gilded it with silver leaf. So it looks like it's kind of moulded on with molten silver. And then I found this paint, which is here, I think, yeah. It's um, De La Rowney acrylic ink, shimmering blue. And I don't know if you can see the shimmers, because the light is so intense. I wonder if I put the curtain across, if that would help. No, not going to work. Never mind. I have, um, as I said, I live in a little TARDIS now. I packed all my furniture away in Devon and I came down to Cornwall and I have become like a student again in my 60s. I have rented a room and I'm a lodger and it's fantastic. I'm having a great time. I really am. Um, the room is beautiful although tiny and hence like a TARDIS um, and I've just got everything in boxes and stacked about and 99% of my b belongings are in a barn on Dartmoor and uh, I shall stay here for a few months. I'm finding loads and loads of galleries down here to get work in that I didn't even know existed, little tiny places. Hitherto I've only gone for the bigger places. Um, meeting loads of people wandering down these little lanes, discovering villages and driving through woods with beech leaves coming out and full of bluebells. It's just breathtaking. Little coves where nobody goes, beach combing, harbour combing, finding all sorts of odds and sods that I'm now sort of making into uh, jewellery as well. I've been making a lot of rings too. So I would take, um, this is a blue and white piece of pottery and I've got ring bases and using epoxy um, paste, I can stick it onto a ring and gild it and cheap as chips, really nice and I'm just going to pop them onto eBay and sell them in shops. I just like the idea of, of taking something that's been long forgotten and discarded and turning it into something which in some people's eyes, mine included, are quite beautiful. So this is another bangle but you can't see it because what I've done is I've stuck little beads that I make out of iridescent tissue, papier-mâché beads and glass beads and bits of mother and pearl into this kind of uh, flat matte papier-mâché paste and it's 
it's great. It's all about having fun and trying things and seeing what comes next. What I'm doing with the um, these little bead things here that I showed you, I've got pieces of mother of pearl. From, it's just sort of slivers of of mother of pearl which I've cleaned. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to take um, little conical things like this and stick them on. So they'll be like um, like a brooch. Well, will be a brooch. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to turn the video thingy machine on every day and show you where I am. What I've been doing here is I found the enormous boy. It's just huge, enormous on the beach. Um, and I've put mod rock on, two layers of mod rock on first. So this is going to be the replica of the said piece of Delftware, which is a very shallow dish I found on the Thames. Uh, it, I found it last winter, but it was made in something like 1755, so it's been around a long time. It's got the most beautiful design on. And I have bought paint, chalk paint, in blues and greens and white. And I bought crackler varnish. And I've got some uh, wax which has got sepia in it, so it'll knock it back and make it look into the cracks. It'll make it look very old. So we'll go through it stage by stage. First of all, mod rock, because that gives you a nice firm inner part to the dish later, which you can then add chalk paint on like a canvas. It's like a canvas. And then I've just been putting um, PVA and white paper here and it's tacky and it will dry out overnight and I'll keep adding layers. And I am in heaven and uh, I'll share the adventures with you. Okay, catch you later. Bye.